Good morning, folks. Happy solstice. The north will see more sunlight today than any other day of the year, and the southern hemisphere's shortest day is upon them. Declination here via spaceweather.com. So do you guys remember how the solar poles were finally about ready to be done with their reversal? <laughs> nope. The north simply refuses to go into the positive, where it must end up for this coming cycle, and the reversal was still incomplete as of the June 1st data point. Also, they've expanded their exo-world biocompatibility to include moons and methane, which twists our idea of a habitable zone and adds at least a factor of 10 to the spherical bodies in the galaxy that could support some kind of life. So two days ago, that southern filament corkscrewed away from our sun in our direction, and this morning the northern filament appears to have done the same. Eruption and impact diagnoses will come. We have a buoy in event mode in the southeastern Pacific off the coast of Chile. It's a minor event, but at the same location as the four shock swarm. Coming to Europe, it appears that the Atlantic systems are keeping the rain at bay in the southwest while we watch cooler air intrude from the north across Norway and eventually making its way into the central regions. They should be mostly rain events, but some of those areas are highly prone to flash flooding. Same kind of story in the United States, but with a bit more of a warning today than yesterday. That warm, moist air has tasted blood this summer and appears to have just been fasting yesterday. He's back and prepare for the storms this evening, folks. Last 24 hours of solar wind shows a noteworthy density bulge followed this morning by some speedier particles. It's just another line of coronal hole streams that are whizzing mostly by north and south of the planet. We don't have any geomagnetic disruption, but the three-day readings on the sensitive flux show a rise in the particles, followed by a hitting of the deck as the forward shock arrives. Looking at the inner heliospheric magnetism, we await the red negatively polarized coronal hole. And wait. And it's gone. It was the smallest of the coronal holes right there swinging in, but the upper coronal fields in blue have now completely blocked her, and as can be seen from last night's power, purple for that incomer is almost at the bottom of the charts. Solar flaring? Couple mid-range sea flares, but that's about it. The departing spots may give us some readings on the X-ray flux, but the geo-effective eruptions would have to come from here. In order to make them, the sunspots need to grow. But that's it. They don't need to morph around. They're already sitting side by side, waiting for some size in order to go delta. Lastly, folks, tomorrow we expect CME impact from the first releasing filament. In yesterday's news, we saw NASA's annual spiral displaying an interplanetary shockwave impacting Earth's magnetosphere on Sunday. And this morning, we see that NOAA's annual spiral is updated as well with the clarified weak impact expected. Geomagnetic storms are very possible, but anything more serious is wholly unlikely. Of course, there were indeed two filaments, and after the first one went, you knew it was only a matter of time. Two plasma filaments erupted, two solar eruptions heading at Earth. We'll point out the next incoming space weather watches in our shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.